Before we begin, Episode 4, Part 1, Exhaust, Installation, and Theory, I wanted to take a moment to discuss the concept behind our 2017 GSXR 1000 exhaust. Um, we want to identify what kind of restrictions are present in this exhaust and also talk about what kind of uh, solutions we have to remove those restrictions, whether it be a slip-on, um, a cat delete system, or a full system to get maximum potential out of the spike. So we're going to get started on that, have some fun right now. Figuring out exactly how the OEM exhaust works is one of the cooler things we get to do here at Brock's Performance. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at this X-up valve. Now, right now, straight down is open. The bike's in neutral. And I'm going to have my helper here put the bike in first gear. Now, you can see the X-up valve opened up a little bit. I'm sorry, closed. Straight down is open. So, he's going ahead and putting the bike through the gears just as if we're going on a quick little cruise. I want to mention this lever here and this cable. This goes up to a similar valve at the crossover tubes, which are tubes that connect the, uh, the cylinders together. Now we know it connects cylinders one and four and two and three. Now we know that crossover tubes help low end power, but unfortunately it comes at the expense of peak power. Now check out how well these OEM uh, exhausts are engineered these days. I'm going to go ahead and give the bike some, some gas. All right, so the X-up valve went from open to, it's not all the way closed, but it's, it's pretty close to closed. As we give it more gas, it starts opening the valve more. Now, I understand the theory about smaller pipes being better for low-end power. As you can see, the exhaust is pretty much closed off right now. We're in fifth gear, and we're going about 60 miles an hour, according to the dyno. There's still, yep, that was 70 miles an hour. All right, they start to open up, yeah, about 60, 65 miles an hour. So I'm not exactly sure what kind of low end power boost we're getting there. I'm certainly helping cut down noise. Now what I'm gonna do here, and this is really cool, I'm going to go ahead and get into it pretty hard and watch that valve open up. Now that was really cool. You see the secondary valve? It shut off those crossovers to boost peak power. It's pretty tough to beat these OEM exhausts these days. And anybody who's in the exhaust industry who says that it's easy to beat them, well, they're not being honest to you. These things are very well engineered. Even for a restricted bike, they, they do everything they can to make these things work well. We'll show you that one more time. Exhaust basically closed. And then they're going to open it up. Now this is all through a cable actuator here in the back of the bike. 
that we will be removing when we place the full exhaust on the motorcycle. To begin episode four, part one, we're going to start the way we always start. We're going to get a couple base runs. Now, I have the uh, flashed ECU in my hand. The stock ECU, which is untouched, is in the bike. There are no other changes. We are basically uh, beginning where we left off on episode three. So we'll get those base runs, and then we're going to make a super quick, simple, easy change to the bike and talk about what we're doing there, and uh, just watch. We got 165 and some change with the stock ECU and 179 and some change with the uh, flash ECU. So we're pretty uh, we're pretty consistent with what we had before. Now, what are the changes? <clears throat> we're going to remove this muffler with no other changes. I'm just going to go ahead and leave the flash ECU in here. Um, no tuning, no nothing. In fact, um, we can just keep rolling. I'm going to show you how simple this is. And so why are we going to do this? Lots of guys like slip-on exhaust, right? Well, this particular exhaust on the, uh, on the GSXR is fully welded. So if you're going to put a slip-on on it, it's not going to be a slip-on uh, anything other than the muffler. So what kind of power can you expect? Well, removing the muffler is going to be as the least restrictive option, right? So um, you might be able to get a muffler that looks better, sounds better, but you're probably not going to get anything that's less restrictive than nothing. So let's pull it off and see what happens.
3 horsepower. So what's that tell us? Um, first of all, that giant mailbox doesn't seem to be very restrictive, does it? Um, in fact, we're going to look at that here right now. So check that out. This muffler weighs right around six pounds and you can see right through it, unlike a lot of the chambered exhaust that you see on other bikes. These things are very well engineered, so they may have a little bit of restriction, but you know, when you look at what it does, it really knocks down the DB level. Like I said, these bikes are very well engineered, so you might be able to get a muffler that looks better, sounds better, but as far as performance, this stuff works very well. So, for the Jixxer fans out there, I hope you're not chewing off your fingernails going, oh no, Brock, what, what does this mean? Are, are, are we doomed? Is the, is the Jixxer not, not what we expect it to be? I don't think so. So, we know a little bit about exhaust development and design. So, what we're going to do is get into a little bit of the theory about the design on this exhaust. And, and like I said, we would never under any circumstances second guess the multi-million dollar research and development team that came up with this exhaust. They designed this motorcycle. They know what they're doing. The problem is they're handcuffed. So we'll talk about that here in a moment and we'll give you some examples of why this particular exhaust for this application works very well. The problem is, is they have to fit into those rules. So we're going to make some changes and show you what those changes make. Uh, Slip-ons are great. They're great for looks. They're great for sound. They're just not, they're not great for power. And a slip-on muffler is different from a slip-on exhaust that maybe takes the cat off. Um, and definitely different from a full exhaust. The part that makes the horsepower is down here, right? It, it's under the fairing. You don't see it. The part you see plays a small, small, role in the whole horsepower equation when it comes to exhaust systems. So we'll be right back and we'll show you what we mean. Alright, I'm getting down and dirty to bring in some info now. OEM S1000RR exhaust. When we were speaking about crossover tubes, this is what we meant. They connect cylinders one and four and two to three. And there's a little valve assembly, this the little butterfly valves, the same as the the X up. So what happens is on the GSXR, when it yanked that lever, it was closing the valves. I took a little piece of wire here to show what kind of flow we would have between them. Once that valve turns, no more flow, increase peak power. Some of the OEMs these days have absolutely incredible front sections on the OEM exhaust. This is a 2016 ZX-10R and it's a great example of this. If you take a look, it's got tapered head pipes, to expand out. Now this, these are all titanium too. It's really nice. And when I say tapered head pipes, so they're smaller here at the top and they get bigger as they go down. So if we come over here and look, um, it's got about an inch and, inch and five eighths head pipe. So if we come over here to the Suzuki, you can look at it. It's stainless steel. There's no taper and as you can see, they're considerably smaller. Let's move back from the head pipes and take a look at the uh, primary collector area and the secondaries. If you look, most people look at this and say, wow, that's a four into one. Well, it looks that way, but it's not. Uh, they've got cylinders three and four connected together and one and two connected together. And this, they also think this is a cat. It's not either. It's a, uh, it's a chamber. And if you look down through here, you'll notice they've got that chamber split so that this is actually a four into two into one arrangement. And which goes back to a, uh, a bolt-on cat in the stock orientation. So if you come over here to the GSXR, the GSXR has a similar configuration with cylinders one and two tied together and three and four tied together. But they come into a small primary collector and back into a small secondary collector, which is welded into the cat, effectively making the head pipes and cat one piece. What's the difference between a slip-on system, a cat delete system, or a three-quarter system? Well, let's take a look on our ZX-10 here. Well, if, if 
we kept the cat installed and we put a slip-on muffler or a slip-on muffler with an elbow pipe, that's a standard slip-on. If we remove the cat, which, you know, is big, heavy, and uh, let me show you something here real quick. You see that honeycomb down in there? Certainly more restrictive than no honeycomb. But if we take this off and replace it with a free-flowing elbow pipe out to a free-flowing muffler, that's going to be, uh, you know, that, that's a much straighter, nicer path for everything to go. And if you look at this, I mean, this is titanium, this is titanium. That looks like a full aftermarket titanium exhaust. It's really nice. The other thing to take into consideration, these two components together weigh over 15 pounds. This muffler and that titanium elbow pipe weigh about five pounds. So there's a significant weight savings there also. We moved over to the GSXR to take a look at the rear of its exhaust system. Welded cat up into the SET valve, which I believe I've got a way to test this to, to see whether or not there really are low end performance gains out of it. And then we come back here to the elbow pipe, which you can see it's neck down. I mean, it steps down considerably to where it goes into the stock exhaust. So if you want to put a slip-on on this bike, you're really restricted to a slip-on muffler because the exhaust is really one piece. Or there are some companies out there that offer a slip-on system, but in order to run those, they have a short elbow pipe that mounts about here. So you've got to get some tools out. <laughs> Hacksaw, you know, plasma cutter, depends on uh, Sawzall, depends on your level of expertise chop this off, install that slip on. The real question is, since we've been looking at this pipe head to, to tail here, if you uh, do free this up, are you really gonna get much of a horsepower gain since it seems like most of the restrictions in this exhaust are from here forward? Well, I made a phone call and I think we can find the answer to that question for you here. We're gonna check that out next.